Wow, here they come on board. We're getting some great turnout right now, Silvio. That's great. Glad to hear it. Looking good. We'll give it a, a couple of seconds more for people to join. I know it's right at two o'clock, so let's see if this is going. All right, we got a, a, we got a number of attendees today. This is looking great. Well, hello everyone. Thank you so much for joining today for an informative and exciting Costa webinar. My name is Dean Lapham. I'm the Director of Professional Development here at CLIA, and I'm going to just quickly go through some housekeeping before we introduce our presenter. So the webinar will run for about 40 to 45 minutes with time for questions at the end. Uh, please feel free to type your questions into the questions module of the webinar, and we'll get to them at the conclusion of the presentation. This webinar is going to be recorded and posted on CLIA's YouTube channel, CLIA Global. And it was that, it's my pleasure to introduce our presenter, Silvio Alonso, to present to you more about Costa's new ships, itineraries, shore excursions, dining options, as well, their, as, well as their exciting new golf and cruise packages available in Dubai and the Mediterranean. Silvio is the Director of Strategic Partnerships at Costa North America been in the travel industry for 30 years with 25 years of cruise industry experience. He started in reservations at Royal Caribbean Cruise Lines. He held various inventory control positions at that organization before transitioning to revenue management in 1995. He held the position of senior revenue management analyst before leaving Royal. In 2002, he joined the Club Med North American team as pricing manager, where he remained for four years. He joined Costa in 2006 as the Director of Revenue Management. Silvio returned to his cruise industry roots by joining back up with Costa. In 2010, he joined the sales force when he became the Director of Strategic Partnerships, currently covering Costa's key partners in North America. Take it away, Silvio. Thank you very much, team. Thank you for the uh, great introduction. Thank you everybody for joining us today. Uh, kind of hearing your history spoken back to you, it's, uh, Time flies when you're having fun. So uh, we have a lot of great, uh, great new things to talk about at Costa. Uh, as as Dean mentioned, I've been in the industry now for over 30 years, and uh, I am very excited about some of the changes, some of the developments that we've uh, managed to uh, work on during the pandemic to reintroduce Costa to the cruising public. Once we we kind of really took a step back to think about how we wanted to alter our product while keeping the core of cruising Italian style. Uh, at its heart, but really what do we want to position Costa as when we did start uh, you know, selling cruises again? And I, and I want to say 2023 is off to a great start and it is a great time to think about Europe and that's what we're going to focus on on the itineraries because we are a European cruise line. As you know, we're part of Carnival Corporation, but we're the distinctly international brand. I'm going to talk about some of those differences about cruising with a more European line throughout the presentation. And I'm also going to share some of my firsthand um, experiences because I just went on a Toscana inaugural christening cruise in June of 22 when we christened our brand new ship, which we'll cover uh, during the presentation. I'll share my personal experiences with you as well. So let's, a little bit of a review about what Costa is. We, as I said, Italy's finest cruise line, part of Carnival Corporation, Carnival, Holland, Princess, Cunard, Seaborn, P&O, Costa, Aida, I think I got all of them. Those are all the Carnival's world's leading cruise lines, but we are the distinctly international brand of the world's leading cruise lines of the Carnival Corporation family. So what I meant, what I mean by international is we are an Italian incorporated, Italian uh, located, incorporated and uh, headquartered company. Our headquarters are in Genoa. We have been operated in the Mediterranean longer than any other cruise line. The Mediterranean is our home. We really like to say we like to show the Mediterranean off our home to all passengers from around the world with a distinct nod to Italy's finest. Where you know everything you you know Italy is the number one destination for passengers from North America traveling to to Europe, and um, we bring that European ambiance. You really do leave North America behind when you're on a cruise with Costa. It's not like other brands even within my own corporation where you're going to be amongst Europeans when you're in port, but then more amongst North Americans when you're on the ship. We're not like that. We're going to be European, that authentic cultural 
immersion of the European environment, both on and off the ship. And that comes with a few differences, one of them being more multilingual, multicultural. Italy is our number one market worldwide, France is number two, Spain number three, Germany number four, the UK number five. North America, obviously they speak English in the UK, so that is one of our six official languages because we have all of those languages plus Portuguese being our sixth official language. And um, it's not that people don't speak English on board, but it is a mix of very many different languages, just like you would find if you were traveling through Europe. You would hear all of those languages, you hear all of those languages on board our ships as well. It's a very cosmopolitan experience, that uninterrupted international immersion with the best menus, wines, cuisines, culture, entertainment, atmosphere, everything that you go to Europe for, we also bring to you on our ships as well. And I have to say, uh, being raised in, in Miami and being raised bilingual, uh, now I'm tri-quadrilingual almost, and I always, always am fascinated I'm really impressed by taking a step back and watching our crew and how they are able to interact and, uh, and provide such quality service to people from around the world. They really do an amazing job. It's really incredible when you think about that. You can always find crew members that are fluent enough in any of those six languages to be able to serve our clients and, and provide great service to our clients from around the world. I'm, I, I'm constantly impressed by it because service is, you know, it's an art form and doing it without the potential of a language barrier is hard enough, but they do just an incredible job. And our crew, you know, second to none, they really do try to make everybody feel welcome. I think they do a fantastic job in that. Um, some of the things that we do is to make sure that you feel welcome, you get to pick the language of your choice for excursions, you get to pick the language of your choice for your dining companions if you're in the main restaurant. So we do, you know, it's all about trying to make everybody feel welcome and really that they're a part of this worldwide uh, collection of passengers. It's a really interesting and unique experience within the cruise industry. But because you know we are a very large corporation and very large cruise line, 50% market share in Europe all by ourselves, but we're definitely operating as a smaller player, what we'd like to call our niche, a niche player here in uh, North America, because our product is so different. The languages, the multiple languages is definitely uh, one of the things to keep in mind. Uh, we're used to, as North Americans, that English will be predominantly the language spoken anywhere that we go. And while English is definitely one of the main languages spoken, you're going to hear a lot of those other languages as well. Also, um, the, uh, the, the, we like to, like I said, we operate very much like a niche player here in North America. We are a very different product. And, but when you think about niches and things that people like to do, things that people might be attracted to, to take a Costa cruise. These are some of the niches that we serve really, really well. And we're gonna cover most of these topics, all of these topics throughout the presentation today. Uh, destination collectors, we're gonna talk about our great itineraries all over the world, really historically significant locations all over Europe and all over the world. We have great new food programs. We've developed new menus and new dining opportunities and venues on board all of our ships throughout the fleet. So we'll talk about that. Wine lovers, an expansive collection of international wines with a nod to Italian wine, of course, but wine from all over the world and all over Europe. History buffs, as I mentioned, we travel to really incredible destinations all around Europe, all around the world. Cultural immersion seekers, that uninterrupted international experience we were talking about, that contemporary atmosphere with a cosmopolitan ambiance, definitely a very um, upscale European uh, uh, product, European experience but very animated as well. So I, I like to say we're come, kind of like bridge the gap between contemporary and premium, a little bit too upscale to be considered contemporary, but a little bit too active to be considered premium, if you will. Because it's not, it's, it's a celebratory, it's a celebration on board for sure. We have great spa programs available for your spa lovers, music, amazing music on board, electronic dance music, live music, classical music, we have multi-million dollar art collections on board all of Costa's ships, 5,000 original masterpieces throughout Costa's fleet. It's really like a floating museum, and we'll see um, some examples of that. And then people watchers. I mean, like I said, you're going to be, uh, it's great to take a step back, just watch all these people, this international uh, collection of guests that you will feel a part of when you're on a Costa cruise. So when you're talking to potential customers, these are some great you know, obviously when you're qualifying your customers, what what, are, what interests you, 
what activities would you like to do on vacation, et cetera. If you hear any of these, we'd like to think that it, we might be a good fit, the, your potential passenger might be a good fit for a Costa cruise. So as I mentioned, those are kind of the things that we've known been known historically for, but we really took a step back and, and thought, okay, when we are, when people do want to start cruising again, you know, what is the message that we want to deliver? And we came up with pretty simple, but very significant messages, I think, that will help to connect and convey the Costa story to your, to your potential guests. Who are we? We are the spokespeople for enrichment through exploration, and we're going to cover what that means. And what we do is we want to give you the opportunity to explore local cultures through a unique sea and land experience. Obviously, we're going to talk about the product on board when you're at sea. We're also going to talk about the changes that we've made to our land portion of the experience as well. And how do we do that? How do we enable you to enrich your lives through exploration? These are the three pillars of the new Costa. The longest stopovers and most authentic excursions ever. That's number one. Highest quality food experience, taking advantage of local uh, know-how, local ingredients, and local methods and um, and uh, employees, if you will, and uh, uh, character uh, workers, if you will. And three, with the most sustainable ships, because sustainability is a very important pillar, always has been to cost, and we're really always expanding our efforts to be the most sustainable cruise line operating. So let's talk about excursions, number one. We want to give you, and I'm going to talk about some of the excursions that I was able to take later on in the presentation, but the longest excursions ever. We want you to have the longest days in port in Europe and all over the world, but particularly in Europe, and the longest excursions, whole days in as much as possible. You get to, again, pick the language of your choice. Sometimes you will do it with another language, but you will have your tour guide fluent in the language that you choose. These are actual experiences. I mean, we're not talking about the traditional city tour, if you will. We want to take you somewhere where you're able to immerse yourself in the local culture and something that will enrich your journey through the traditions, the flavors, the colors, the music, the food, the dances, everything that makes that destination unique. As I mentioned, we've been sailing in the Mediterranean longer than any other line, so we feel that we know it as well, if not better than anybody. We want to share our home, the Mediterranean and Europe, with our guests, with your guests from around the world. So uh, also, we're going to take you to smaller villages, unexpected places, hidden gems, some places that you would only be able to go if you were on a Costa cruise. And all of this coming with the worry-free, knowing that your artist, your guides are fluent in your language, have the expertise and the know-how and the knowledge of the area that you are visiting. You take advantage of our logistical know-how because we've been operating with these vendors for many, many years. And you get even priority access in certain museums and artistic sites for front of line access. Of course, one of the benefits of taking an excursion with Casa besides all of these uh, features is that the ship knows where you are at all times because you're on a Costa officially sponsored excursion. New for 2023, even though we're not advertising it publicly, but I can speak about it in a webinar like this, some of our excursions will now be sponsored by National Geographic. Ge National Geographic, we're not advertising in North America, but you can speak to it with potential uh, passengers or current passengers will certainly be spoken to about the National Geographic, Geographic excursions when they are looking over their excursion options on the cruise that they're booked on. And of course, National Geographic, we brought in historians, architects, professors, but photographers, you know, National Geographic, second to none when it comes to the cultural enrichment opportunities that we're able to present to our passengers. So definitely look for those National Geographic excursions as a great opportunity for your passengers to take advantage of only on Costa. So that was a little bit about excursions and we'll talk about the itineraries because that was the first pillar. The second pillar that we talked about was the new food experience. And we're gonna talk quite a bit about the food that's available on board Costa uh, now, but one thing that we really took a step back and said is, okay, we want to expand our specialty dining opportunities. So Tempanyaki, available on Costa Diadema, Smeralda, Firenze, is being rolled out throughout the fleet. Sushino and Kiki, Kiki Poki, uh, we were able to, I was able to experience the sushi bar on board the Casa Toscana when I was on board her in June of last year. And I have to say the sushi was actually really, really good. Uh, also, I mentioned we have some great partnerships with great brands like Heineken, not Italian, but certainly one of the better known, if not better known um, 
German European brands, if you will. We have Heineken Bar Bistro and Steakhouse available. All of these venues are being rolled out throughout the fleet so that eventually all the ships will have most of these venues available. A great pizzeria, Pizzeria Pomodoro, sit-down pizza restaurant, which is available for dinner. Salty Beach Cafe, which is kind of like food truck, elevated food truck food is a way that cuisine is a way that I would describe it. Focaccia sandwiches, salads, things like that that are located right next to the one of the pools. So you don't have to miss any of the action, but still be able to sit down and have a really quality lunch or meat or snack, if you will, while you're enjoying the outdoors on board our ships. Because we're our European line, uh, dining does tend to be later, 7.30 for main seating. Late seating in Europe can be all the way as late as 9.30. It is a many courses. It's about a six, you know, five to seven course meal, smaller portions, but a lot of courses. It's a more uh, indicative, more representative of, of European style of dining. And it is a longer service. So because of that, our nights do tend to go later into the wee hours of the morning. So there's always sandwiches, hamburgers, pizza, what have you, sweets, if you want to uh, you know, partake in a late night snack when you're done enjoying the nightlife on board our ships. We do have some amazing nightlife uh, venues that we'll cover um, in the presentation as well. So these specialty dining options range anywhere from about 15 euros up to about 50 euros. We're going to talk about the 50 euro experience in a couple of slides. But I have to say, one other great time, reason why it's such a good time to go to Europe now is number one, people have not been able to go for a long time. So there has to be a lot of pent up demand. But besides that, the dollar is very strong, stronger than it's been in a long time, if ever, versus the euro. While our onboard currency, our onboard currency in Europe is euro. Whereas before that was real, really a disadvantage. As of right now, it's about ninety-two, a uh, dollar nine to the to the uh, euro. So there was a time when it was actually even. So we're hoping that we get back to that point soon. But compared to like three or four years ago, before the pandemic, when the euro, when the dollar was really weak versus the euro, it's a much better time. Your your dollar is going to get you a lot further when you go to Europe now. So that it's a great uh, point to keep in mind when talking to potential clients. So more about our food. Uh, Bruno Barbieri, that's him in the middle. All three of these chefs are Michelin star rated chefs, but multiple Michelin star rated chefs. Uh, Bruno Barbieri uh, helped us a couple of, a few years ago to recreate our menus throughout the fleet. And as part of the new Costa, we wanted to bring in some other uh, Michelin star rated chefs to help him uh, re recreate our menus as well. So Bruno Barbieri was joined by Ellen Darroz, that's her on the left, and Angel Leon on the right. Angel Leon uh, from Spain and Ellen Daros from France, in addition to Italian chef Bruno Barbieri. So Italy, Spain, and France, no surprise, kind of like the three capitals, pillars, you know, centers of culinary, Mediterranean culinary expertise and tradition. So we're really happy to have all three of these chefs on board. They have really taken advantage of using the most authentic ingredients, authentic techniques, quality without compromise, and really using local uh, resources for, for produce and, and, um, and ingredients wherever possible. In addition to that, they, like I mentioned, they've helped to recreate our menus throughout the fleet in our main restaurants. And also they will take turns creating a destination dish, which is usually available the day before you arrive in a port of call. And the destination dish, as I mentioned, takes advantage of the techniques, the culinary traditions of the port that you'll be visiting the next day. Some examples of the destination dishes are Bruno Barbieri, for example, the night before you get to Marseille, he'll present ratatouille with sea bass meatballs, potatoes, and aioli sauce. So Bruno Barbieri will, will you know, take advantage of uh, representing and presenting Marseille in his dish, his destination dish, the night before you arrive in Marseille. Alain Daroz introduces Palermo, Palermo being in the south of Italy, very rustic, very farm-oriented cuisine, beef medallion with Sicilian couscous and saffron. Actually, sounds pretty good. And uh, Angel Leon from Spain, he's a fisherman. He's an avid fisherman, specializes in seafood. But in this case, because he's representing Parma de Mallorca, being a Spanish chef, he uh, Parma de Mallorca similarly is very rustic, farm-oriented uh, food, if you will roasted pork with sweet potato puree, and sobrasada, sobrasada being a Spanish cold cut, 
very similar to prosciutto. So these are examples of the destination dishes that are available uh, the night before you arrive in these ports of call. Like I mentioned, every night there'll be a destination dish presented by one of the chefs on board. So this is a good example of the destination dish and also an example of what a cuisine is like on board because it's maybe not exactly what people think of when they think Italian cuisine. We are authentically Italian, both Southern and Northern Italian cuisine, which Northern Italian is somewhat different than Southern Italian. I think we represent, we think of Italian cuisine more the Southern, which is more the red sauces, the more what we're used to in North America, but Northern Italian, definitely more seafood, lighter fare, um, and a lot more grilled meat and fish in the Northern Italian cuisine with obviously nods to different cuisines from around Europe as well. Now, the 50 Euro experience that I was talking about, only available on Costa, these three chefs created a very intimate, high-end, luxury tasting menu experience in the Archipelago restaurant. The archipelago, an archipelago is a chain of islands, very simply. So this is a five course dinner, 50 euros. I've seen tasting menu, fine dining experiences like this on other, on other lines easily over about $150. So it's an incredible value. I was lucky enough to uh, dine in the Archipelago restaurant when I was on board Toscana uh, in last summer. And I have to tell you, it was definitely one of the highlights not only a highlight of the cruise, it's one of the highlights of my entire, um, that I've ever eaten at. I mean, it really was that much of a great experience, the food and the service. We did the wine pairing, which was another like 30 or 40 euros. So we got a, 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 a five course dinner with a wine pairing, an amuse bouche to start. So it's actually a six course dinner. And um, each of the chefs presents one of the menus your table is like its own island because the, the, the staff will come and explain the region that your, that your dish was coming from, the ingredients where they were sourced from, the traditions of the area of the, that created the menus that, of the items that you will be dining on that evening. So it's really, I mean, it's a, very, it's a small venue. It's only about 120 seats. So it's a very high end, almost like I said, luxury dining experience um you can choose it's being rolled out throughout the fleet uh you can choose you can each choose a different chef's menu i had the bruno barbieri menu so i had pasta with veal i had lamb chops i had a lobster and mango salad i can't remember what the dessert was i think it was like a creme brulee or something i, I can't recall now but anyway it was really really fantastic uh, other people at my table got other chefs one person did helen da rose the french chef Another person did Spain. So you all get to you know, pick different menus, different chefs if you'd like at the dinner, or you can all choose the same one. Uh, one of the tables went more than once because they all wanted to experience the same menu at the same time. Our, our table, we all picked different chefs and we were all trying each other's food. Really, really fun experience. And um, sustainability, let's talk about that third pillar because it really comes into play in the Archipelago restaurant. First of all, Many of the item, many of the of the of the items that you see in the Archipelago restaurant are repurposed, taken from the ocean to like the driftwood to be used as decorative items in the Archipelago. So it is a sustainable in its in its design and it's in decor. It's in de, in its decor. And the Guardians of the Coast helps us by taking taking the timber, the driftwood from the ocean to repurpose it for use in the Archipelago restaurant and a portion of the proceeds that we get from the cover charges to dine in the Archipelago restaurant are donated to the Guardians of the Coast, uh, which is an Italian uh, organization that helps education programs for the environment and also to protect the Italian coastline. Another great example of our sustainability is that excess food in many ports is donated to the Banco Alimentare, which is a organization that feeds you know, those in need in many of these ports around the Mediterranean. So, Again, we talk about sustainability being that third pillar. Here are some images of the Archipelago restaurant. So you can see this really is basically the entire restaurant. So you can see here, as I mentioned, it's a very intimate, you know, high-end exclusive dining experience. This is the seating area at the right of the restaurant when you walk in. This is toward the left of the restaurant when you walk in. You can see there the repurposed driftwood that we use as part of the decor in the Archipelago restaurant. This is pretty much the entire restaurant beautiful location and you can see there you're looking toward from the back 
toward the front of the restaurant. You enter in that bar that's at the far end of the restaurant. And you can see this is pretty much the entire expanse of the Archipelago restaurant. So I have to, again, I cannot tell you enough what a great experience that was. So uh, shifting gears somewhat, we're gonna talk about the entertainment on board. By the numbers, over 13,000 seats in our theaters, over 1,200 square meters of LED wall, and they do some really fantastic things with those LED walls that we'll talk about. 180 musicians, we have all kinds of music on board, electronic dance music, techno music, if you will, for many of the parties that we throw. We have live music, opera music, um, a lot of jazz music, uh, a lot of dance music as well. We have 108 dancers and 58 acrobats, and we'll talk about where the acrobats come into play right now. So here you see examples of our entertainment. You can see the traditional review shows on the right, those live musicians that I mentioned there in the middle. And then on the left, we have a, an image from El Coliseo, which is the, the Coliseum, literally, in on our new ships, the Toscana and the Smeralda. Not only is this the atrium of the ship, which has a lot of lounges and food and beverage locations where you can grab a coffee, grab a drink, grab a pastry, whatever you'd like around the Coliseum. So it's it's a hangout. It's a place to hang out during your cruise to just, you know, people watch or what have you. But it's also a theater in the round. And so it's also used as an entertainment venue in addition to theater locations around the ship. And that's where you get the acrobats that are coming down from the ceiling, doing a, you know, acrobatic Cirque du Soleil type of entertainment experience. And you can see there, they're, they're projecting things on the LED walls images on the LED walls during the show, during the day. I mean, you could really sit there. I did sit there on more than one occasion and work. And the projections on the LED walls, even during the day in the Coliseum, are really, really, really fantastic. It's a great way to spend the day people watching, which is one of those niches that I spoke about earlier. And the entertainment, you know, is really internationally oriented, so you can ex experience it with people from around the world. And then there'll also be breakout entertainment sessions, like there'll be jazz music in one bar, there'll be dance music in another bar, things like that. But they really do a great job of making sure that everybody feels that they are properly entertained. Uh, it's a lot of fun, I have to say, really a lot of fun. So sustainability, in addition to all the things that I already talked about, all the points that I already mentioned about, you know, the proceeds to the Guardians of the Coast, the Banco Alimentari, Casa Esmeralda and Casa Toscana, which are our newest ships, we were the first ships in the industry to utilize liquefied natural gas. It's the most advanced propulsion system and fuel in the world. Not only is it more economically economical, it's less expensive for us to use. It also allows us to utilize a lower carbon footprint because it's more efficient. So the ships don't need to dedicate as much room to technical space. It's also much more environmentally friendly. So Costa in addition to all the other charitable organizations that I mentioned and endeavors, we really are constantly looking for how do we operate in the most efficient and most environmentally friendly way possible through continuous research and innovation. Uh, so that's very important to us. Obviously, we need to take care of our planet, the oceans, not only that, you know, obviously provide us with, with our ability to do business, but they provide us with the opportunity to live on this planet. So that's very important to Costa. Always has been, but it remains one of the three key pillars of the new Costa. So speaking about the product on board, here we have some of the brands that we use on board. And I'm not going to go through all of these because they're being they're available on all the ships and some of them even have specific locations where you can actually go to the Campari bar or you can go to the Heineken bar and steakhouse. But Nutella, one of the best known brands in all of Europe, Ferrari's wines available on board, Techno Gym, we just partnered with Coca-Cola and we have a new partnership with Carver Cafe Verdiano, which is our coffees, really great coffee uh, company and service available on board. These are examples of our main partners that are obviously some of Europe's finest brands. We have many more, Gelateria, Amarillo, uh, Aperol, really Italy's and Europe's finest brands available for passengers to enjoy on board the ships as well. So this is a part of the uh, presentation where I cover Toscana, which is a ship that I was on. This would normally be a video, but because sometimes it's not as easy to view when you're wearing a webinar, I took some key images. This is her, She. this is the Casa Toscana, uh, over 5,400 passengers, double occupancy. So this is a really, you know, it's up there. It's a large ship, just under 200,000 tons. 
So it's about 180 something thousand tons, which is low because of that LNG allows us to operate more efficiently. So Casa Toscana was in, christened in 2022. Here you have an image of the cabin. This is exactly like the cabin I stayed in. It was, my cabin was always a spotless too. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, so you can see there the veranda toward the back and you can see, you know, the little couch, the bathroom would be at the entrance, but you know, these cabins are very well, uh, very well appointed about 250 square feet. So, you know, and the verandas are very, are nice size. They're, they're not, they're not that, they're not a thin little veranda. It's a good size veranda where you can really take advantage of enjoying the scenery. Here's an example of the aft pool. Now there's a lot of things going on here. First of all, for a ship that's 5,400 passengers, there's a lot of different spaces that you can escape to, uh, including here, where you don't feel like you're constantly surrounded by crowds of people. So the ship is designed very well to take advantage of quiet areas and also flows very well. So you don't feel like you're constantly surrounded by 5,000 people. Here you can see an example of the LED projections, another really great example of the LED projections. And they use this venue for our white night party, which is an electronic dance music party where it's a white, you know, they put all the glow in the dark lights and it's a very much like an Ibiza style night pool club, beach club, if you will. Uh, it's a great party, went up and, you know, until two or three o'clock in the morning. A lot of great, you know, modern electronic dance music. I mean, obviously being a European line, we have one of our main sources of music is DJ music as well. And this is also where you have the location in the back of the Salty Beach Cafe. So it's adjacent to both the aft pool that we're looking at now and the midship pool. So you can just, you know, kind of take a quick escape there to the Salty Beach Cafe, grab a really high quality quality lunch or snack and a glass of wine or what have you, and then, you know, go right back into the action. So it's really a lot of fun. This is an example of the spa. I talked about those great spa programs that we have. The Sole Mio Spa is a world-class spa available uh, across Costa's ships all over, all across the fleet. This is an example of the Philosotherapy Pool, uh, one of the treatment uh, rooms, uh, treatment facilities available on board the uh, Costa Toscana. Campari, this is a Campari bar. Uh, as I mentioned, Campari being one of our brands, but this is a really beautiful location. I, I I will admit I hung out here quite a bit because I do I am a fan of Campari. Not everybody likes it, but I, I am a fan. And uh, it's a great place. I mean, look at the use of the red. Obviously, red being the iconic color of Campari is really fantastic design. Uh, this was another one of my uh, favorite spots, uh, the Ferrari sparkling wine bar. I mean, all of this glasswork throughout all of Costa ships is all Murano glass, stem to stern. If you're not, I mean, Murano glass, you know, high end hand-blown glass, we, we, and it's amazing that all of the ships is all Murano glass from, from stem to stern. Look at the porcelain Italian tile, the decor here and the Ferrari. Ferrari is one of the better known wine houses in Italy, uh, specializing in Metho Champenois uh, sparkling wine. It, the Ferrari um, sparkling wine, as they call it, is not like a Prosecco, it really drinks a lot closer to a champagne. Uh, very dry, really delicious. And they have like four or five different types of Ferrari wines that you can choose from in the Ferrari wine bar. And then Heineken, the Heineken Steakhouse and Bistro, you know, this is bar food, steak and potatoes, meat and potatoes, like great steaks available at the Heineken Bar and Bistro. Again, they do a really great job of representing the brand, obviously the iconic green for the Heineken bottle. And this is also a live music venue like more rock music, if you will. They usually have live rock and roll music in the Heineken bar uh, and bistro every night. So there's always something for, you know, are you a Campari person? Are you a Heineken person? Are you, you want to go to the Ferrari bar? Do you want to fine dine? Do you want to do something more casual? You know, and, and, you know, of course, people's moods change during vacation. One night you're in the mood for one thing. Another night you may be in the mood for another venue. So it's really a lot of great different venues to take advantage of. And last but not least, Aperol. Aperol is another iconic, um, Italian brand where the Aperol bar is actually located by the pool and they specialize in sparkling drinks like Aperol spritz, uh, sparkling Negronis, things like that with Aperol, things like that, that are really, you know, for when you're out in the hot weather, you really can cool off with a nice refreshing drink and you're not too far from the action, as I mentioned before. So that's a little bit about our, not a little bit, quite a bit about our ship, about our, our excursions. Let's talk about 
about the food. Now let's talk about the itineraries. Where can you go on these fantastic ships? And I mentioned for the destination collectors, we have some really incredible itineraries. And oftentimes, you know, for those people that say, I've been everywhere, well, guess again. We have right now Casa Toscana for winter of 2023 and also winter of 2024 will be um, operating in Dubai. Now, again, I mentioned the longest days in port. You overnight in Dubai, one night as a floating hotel, overnight in Abu Dhabi. So again, longest days in port. And then additional stops in Doha and Muscat. Remember, Toscana in 23 and 24 will be doing the Eastern night uh, Dubai itinerary. Doha obviously just had an incredible resurgence into a uh, worldwide prominence during the FIFA World Cup. So this is a really great way to see this part of the world, a very economical and cost-effective way. Your man money gets you very far because a seven night cruise really comes with some really uh, fantastic price points in order for you to be able to get to know uh, this region of the world. Now for the Western Mediterranean, everything to the West of Italy, we call Western Mediterranean. So like Western Italy, Spain, and France. So that's where the bigger ships are. 5,400 passenger ships, Smeralda and Toscana, sail out of the Western Mediterranean in, or to the Western Mediterranean because the smaller ships are sailing the Eastern because of uh, capacity constraints. But I'm, not, I'm covering our key itineraries here. I, I could spend an hour just covering our itineraries, but just gonna cover some of the key itineraries here. This is on Toscana, seven nights. This is very similar to the itinerary that I did when I was on the Toscana this past June. But here, 11 hours in Ibiza, almost an overnight, uh, sorry, almost an overnight, 12 hours in Ibiza, 11 hours in Naples, and eight hours in Valencia. So you can see one of the pillars, longer stays in port. When I did this itinerary, we did, instead of Ibiza, we stopped in Barcelona, because that, were the, that is where the ship was christened. But this is one of the few itineraries that allows you to take advantage of Ibiza's nightlife. That's only available in June, July, and August, in the shoulder season, in April, May, and September, October, the stop in Ibiza is replaced with a call in Palma de Mallorca. So make sure that if you do have a client that wants to do Ibiza, you book them on the Toscana during the peak season. Uh, now, just quickly talking about what I was able to do on my cruise. In Naples, we went to Pompeii, never been there before. It was incredible. It really was overwhelming, the history, the sense of history that we got there. As I mentioned, we stopped at Valencia, which is a great Port, uh, that I got to know on a cruise, and it was really one of the highlights of the cruise. I had never been to Valencia until I had been on a cruise before, so I was really happy to go back. The birthplace of Paella Valenciana, the, the seafood dish that is very popular in Spain, named after this city. We called in Barcelona, which is great because we were right in the center of town. You can just, you know, you're basically 10 minutes from Las Ramblas, which is right in the center of town. In Marseille, in the south of France, we went to a great uh, on a great excursion to Aix en Provence, which is in the in in the Provence uh, region of of France, and it was a really quaint little village with a lot of quaint churches. We were able to sit on one of the main avenues and just uh, sit back and enjoy some French wine and and uh, hors d'oeuvres. It was a uh, light lunch. It was really a great experience, and we we actually sailed in and out of Rome. Now you can sail out of Rome. Uh, most people sail out of Rome, but you can also sometimes sail on out of these other ports as well. Savona and Marseille are open uh, by request in most times. Savona is always open. Marseille could be requested if you do want to start and end your cruise in Marseille. And talking about Savona, because it's definitely one of the lesser known ports here, but the excursions in Savona are absolutely amazing. You can go to Monte Carlo, Cinque Terre, Portofino, Santa Margarita. We took an excursion that was exclusive to Costa. We went to two medieval villages called Finarborgo and Noli which nobody had ever heard of. Finar Borgo is a medieval village where you, it's a gated village where you actually have to walk through a gate in order to get into the medieval village. It was really like taking a step back in time. And then Noli was a smaller village, but that had an incredible seafront, uh, ocean front with just like you would, I mean, it was like picture perfect image of what the Italian Riviera would look like. It really was one of the highlights of the cruise. And again, exclusive to Casa, nobody had ever even heard of these places, but we all got to go as, as a group, and it was really, really incredible experience. Now, uh, on Smeralda, again, sister ship, Smeralda uh, was launched in 2019, operated for a little while, and then had to stop. So she's basically brand new. And as I mentioned, Toscana was just christened last year. So five stopovers of 10 hours or more, 
very similar to the itinerary that we, we covered on Toscana, with the exception of this calls on Palermo, which is in on the Italian off, on the Italian island off the coast of the mainland of Italy of Sicily. Great food down there in Sicily. Really, really fantastic spot if you have foodies that want to take advantage of this stop in Palermo. And then going the other way to the Eastern Mediterranean out of Venice. And again, you know, these are smaller ships. The ship is Costa Deliziosa is about 2,260 passengers, double occupancy, because sailing out of Venice, the government has capped the, the size of the ships that can get in and out of there. But you do stop on Bari, in Bari on the Southern coast of Italy, Cephalonia, Mykonos and Santorini with an overnight in Mykonos. So a really great way to see the Greek Isles. And again, long stays in port, one of those pillars, you know, to really take advantage of as much time in port as possible. Then we have a couple of Northern, Northern Europe itineraries as well. Uh, the fjords out of Kiel, you can also board this one in Copenhagen, and you can see uh, the four stops, uh, ports of call in Norway. You stop in each of the villages, you also uh, sail past the Norwegian fjords. I hear it is absolutely one of the most spectacular nature scapes, landscapes, anywhere in the world. Um, I definitely would one day want to see this part of the world. Uh, and then also uh, sailing out of Kiel. Now, remember, if you're sailing out of Kiel, out of Copenhagen, there will be a lot of Danish people on board. There will be a lot of German people on board. We really, remember, we, we are that European experience both on and off the ship. So please do keep that in mind. This is a great itinerary with uh, long stays in Stockholm, Visby, Riga, Tallinn, and Helsinki. So a uh, really great way to see this, this part of the world. There's even longer cruises in Northern Europe as well, up to 15 nights, but I mentioned these two kind of um, key itineraries in Northern Europe. And then last but not least, we wanna talk about the golf program. We are launching, it's, uh, it's in the process of being launched right now, so uh, definitely you will be getting more information on pricing and availability, but I do wanna mention the golf program. Uh, Costa is the official sponsor of the Ryder Cup 2023. It is the first time that the Ryder Cup has been held in Europe, and it's actually being held at a port, uh, uh, a golf course in Rome at the country club Marco Simone, right outside of Rome. So the golf and cruise program will be available in the Mediterranean and also in Dubai. And it will be available to FIT, to individual passengers, and also to group passengers. And the price points are for four courses. In the Mediterranean, you'll be playing in Marseille, Rome, Savona, and Barcelona, if you're on a Western Mediterranean cruise. Those are the four ports of call where there are a choice of golf courses. And the golf program is, an, is like an excursion, but you get golf in all four of those ports. You also get rental if you need golf rentals. If you have your own clubs, it includes insurance on your clubs and it includes all transfers and all T fees as well. So it really is, and the price point is very, very reasonable. I think the four courses will be coming in under $1,000, if you can believe that. And, you know, obviously golf is a high-end sport, if you will. So for that price point to take advantage of four of the best golf courses in the Mediterranean, including everything, you know, is really a really fantastic opportunity for the golfers that want to golf in this part of the world. And then in Dubai, that program is just coming together now. They will be announcing the golf courses that will be available in Dubai as well. Uh, Dubai obviously being very high end destination, so it makes sense to have golf there as well. So we will be sending shortly, I think we're only about a week away from the launch officially of uh, the program, where it's available, what the pricing will be and how to book it. So please do stay tuned uh, for all those details because they will be coming your way very, very soon. This is a great program, guys. I, I, can't, I can't stress enough. It's a great opportunity. If you have golfers, please do keep Costa in mind because um, this program is really gonna be something special. So I wanna say thank you. I'm gonna try to say thank you in all of the six official languages. Grazie, merci, donka, gracias, obrigado, and grazie, did I say merci? I forgot one, I can't remember now, let me see. Anyway, thanks, oh, English, I forgot English. <laughs> thank you very much, everybody. It's uh, really a really pleasure to be here with you today. Um, if you need anything from me, my email is there also. I encourage you to please join our Child Cost Advisors North America Facebook page. Uh, if you wanna give us a follow, we have some great, uh, all the latest and greatest information there on new ships, new itineraries, 
promotions, interesting fun facts, you know, a lot of great information there for you to get access to by following us on Facebook. And I think I got it in at just exactly 45 minutes. So I'm going to oh, uh, that, open that it up. Was, that was right at 45 minutes. You said 45 <laughs> minutes and you got it right there, Silvio. Thank you. So that was really, really neat. Uh, again, it's, it's, it's neat to hear about the expansion with the, the food and the I, I, oh, I was getting hungry hearing about all the <laughs> wonderful meals that you, with those amazing chefs. So we got a few comments of, uh, thank you very much, gracias. We do have a question about special accommodations for solo travelers and uh, single supplements. So can you, can you expand a little bit about that for what you might have available? Sure, I, unlike, we do not have, uh, unlike, which by the way, all, all, in all honesty, the, the single studio that some other brands have come up with is a really great development. Uh, we are not many of our ships do have, if any of our ships have accommodations like that. But what we are doing is we're doing single supplement promotions where, you know, maybe not in June, July or August, but, you know, in the, in the shoulder off peak, you can get a regular room for 100 for and there will be no supplement. So we do launch single promotions from time to time. So in lieu of having single accommodations, you know, purposely built like other brands, the single promotion is, you know, it's a pretty, pretty good value as well because you get a whole room to yourself. So look out for those because we do, we do present those from time to time during the season. Okay. Another question came up. Um, how accessible is Costa cruising since some European countries aren't very accessible? Accessible in terms of disabilities, we have to be 100% ADA, American Disabilities Act compliant because we are, our, our parent corporation is in the United States. So any, you know, a, a lot of the ships like Smerwald and Toscana are sister ships, you know, not sister ships, but they're the same prototype as like the Mardi Gras for Carnival. So the same accessibility that you could expect on another North American brand is the same accessibility that you will ex will be able to take advantage of on cost as well because we must be 100% ADA compliant because of our parent corporation. Excellent, thanks. We have a question about what is the age group for most cruises? Good question. Uh, tends to skew a little bit younger. That's this actually brings up a really good point. We our median income tends to be 100,000 plus, which tends to skew a little bit higher than many of the other brands within Carnival Corporation. And our median age tends to, skew, tends to skew a little bit lower, late 40s, mid 40s, late 40s, early 50s. So it's a little bit younger age group and a little bit higher demographic in North America. And I think uh, the reason for that is because we maybe are for a passenger or a client that is a little bit more well-rounded, if you will, has maybe traveled a little bit more robustly and wants to try something that's a little bit off the beaten path, something that they know is different. And I think that usually comes with being a little bit better traveled and being a little bit better traveled does oftentimes comes comes with having more disposable income. So uh, I, I really thank you for allowing me to, to speak to those points. That's a really good point to bring up. Yeah, and I think following up with that, Sylvia, the, the concept of multi-generational travel is is really expanding. So can you kind of tell us a little bit about if I was going to go with my dad and then bring my kids on board, what what would our three generations be doing? You know, that's a really good point, because not only is multi-generational travel expanding, multi-generational travel is huge in Europe. I mean, in the summer, when people go on vacation, they I, I've seen it firsthand. They bring the kids, the parents, the grandparents, the aunts, the uncles, <laughs> everybody. And it's not only the Italians, the Spanish are very much about multi-generational travel. So, you know, we have fantastic kids programs on board the ship. So you have, we have a Squawk Kids program where the kids are able to, you know, have their own dining, their own space. They take them around the water slides. They really do as a great job of having the kids entertained so that the parents can enjoy themselves, you know, while they're on the ship, you know, doing whatever they want to do for the, for the grandparents. There's uh, different venues with barroom dancing, different things that the grandparents can take advantage of. There's great lecture talks around the ship as well. So every, you know, we really do cater to multi-generational travel 
quite a bit. And then usually at night, everybody eats together and then everybody goes their separate way. The the grandparents maybe will go to hear the jazz, the jazz music, and then the kids maybe go to the white night party or to the disco or what have you. And the parents maybe want to go to the, the champagne bar. So uh, multi-generational travel is not only expanding in the United States, but it has been a huge component in Europe for many, many years now. No lack of opportunity for the generations to enjoy themselves on Costa. Well, thank you very much, Sylvia. We um, we have no more questions have come in yet for the last couple of minutes. So I want to thank you so much for uh, a great presentation today. And thank you. Uh, thank you to everyone who joined today. Do you have any parting uh, comments, Sylvia? Well, no, thank you so much. I mean, I really can't thank you enough for uh, hosting us and for the great interaction. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, please do keep us in mind. Like I said, never been a better time to go to Europe. The euro, the dollar is really strong. Flights are competitive. A lot of lift to Europe now. And, you know, the best itineraries, the longest days in port, something for everybody. I hope that you'll keep us in mind uh, for your clients that have an opportunity to go to Europe. Those destination collectors, those people that want something different and those people that are looking for a historically a historical immersion, please do keep us in mind. We, uh, we're looking forward to a great 2023. There's a lot of pent up demand out there. Now is the time to take advantage of it. Thank you. Thanks again. And everyone will thank you very much for joining today and we'll see you out on the ocean. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye.